Fe Indian Market is where the latest and greatest in Native American art is showcased and provides many options to those who are looking to start a collection or add to your already existing one. Arts and culture blogger Paul Nimi joins us with the 411 on how to go from spectator to collector at Indian Market. Welcome back, Paul. Thank you. It's so great to be back in the 505. I know. We missed you around I here. Miss, I miss it around here. Well, I know you have such a passion for what we are talking about today, and I'm so glad you're here to share it with everybody. We've actually heard you say that original art can be affordable, and that's what people really want to hear. So Indian Market is a great place for people who are on any kind of budget to buy original art. Why is that? Well, it, you know, Swaya actually juries in over a thousand artists every year, mm -hmm. so there's really something for everyone yeah. from five dollars on up into the thousands of dollars. The other great thing about market is that you can um, look at and purchase the work of emerging artists. So, you know, many artists are working in virtual obscurity this year, no but next year their work could explode and their career could take off. So yes. this is your opportunity to, to buy in early and snag a piece of one of those future stars. Oh, yeah. The other thing is that um, many Native American artists are actually generational. Sure. So they teach their children and their grandchildren, mm -hmm. which means, you know, even if you can't afford a, a, a pot by that top artist, mm -hmm. there's probably going to be something in a lower price range by a family member that you'll enjoy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So again, making it affordable for everybody. And you are actually of the opinion that there are really two Indian markets. So what do you mean by that? Well, first of all, I wanted to talk about just right here. These are just some items that we have that are under fifty dollars. Oh, okay. So you can actually find some pottery. You can find fetishes for oh. under fifty dollars. So you can take away something from Indian market. See, and again, affordable, which a lot of people don't realize they have that option. Exactly. And then as far as the other Indian market, I really mm -hmm. do believe that. You know, I think here in the Southwest, yeah. people who have never been to Indian market have a tendency to think. Oh, it's just Pueblo pottery exactly. or just Navajo jewelry, but it's really not. It's so much more than that. Yeah. Artists come from all over the country, from the Northeast, mm -hmm. the Southeast, the, the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest, including mm -hmm. Alaska, and even now um, Canada when they opened it up to the First Nations people so uh, last year. So it's the whole world. Exactly. I mean, that's the bottom line is Indian Market has a wide array of something for everyone, and, and not only uh, with you know the art that we're looking at here, but also with wearable art. Let's get into some of this so sure. we can go through. Sure. So Carol and Marthley Douglas is one of those people. You know, she's a star in her own right. She's mm -hmm. Northern Arapaho Seminole. She comes to Santa Fe every year from Seattle. Wow. And nice. she's a master basket maker. She incorporates traditional coiling method with um, contemporary materials like wax <sighs> linen. So you see this lightning design here. Look at and that. then this beautiful embellishment with abalone shell. Just beautiful. Oh. This is $450. And then she's also really known for her miniatures. And these are mm -hmm. so delicate and beautiful. Here you see one with a, a native woman theme. It's got beadwork and the wax linen as well. And when you consider the time and effort that goes into making something like that, she made one of these for market this year. Gosh. This is $350. <gasps> so stop by and get that because that is like, going to be at a premium this year. Just the time. Like you said, the detail, every last detail. It could take it could take a year just to make one item. Exactly. So no wonder. I mean, it's certainly worth at least $350. So, you know, many artists, especially emerging artists, create mm -hmm smaller pieces to entice collectors but yes. a lot of the established artists also do pieces to um, to entice uh, uh, collectors as well and sure. Marla Allison from Laguna Pueblo she's Laguna and Hopi nice. she really understands how to build a collectorship mm. so she offers a few pieces at a premium every year that are a little bit smaller and here we have nice. one it's called calm blue morning oh, and it's a beautiful little bluebird here um, this is in a bright a bright color scheme. It's kind of a new style she's working on. It's $100. Wow. And if you consider that she's in the Heard Museum Permanent Collection in Phoenix and she is in top galleries throughout the Southwest, that is a great deal. No doubt. Uh, yeah, and, and eventually I think it'll be worth even more than that. So to exactly. be able to, to get it now at that price is definitely worth it. And what else have you brought with us? Well, and then, you know, going back to the idea of uh, people coming from all over, but also the idea of emerging artists. Yes. Mary Beth Nelson, who is a registered Cherokee from Oklahoma, mm -hmm. she's been painting for 13 years and has a following out there, and she sure. was recently featured in an art show in Paris, France. But this is her very first Indian market. So oh, she's really nice. an emerging artist in the Santa Fe art scene. So she's being introduced, really. Exactly. So she's bringing some smaller pieces as well as larger pieces. Here we have uh, one in her southeast swirl style. That's a traditional style. Okay. This is her take on it. Um, it's a pen and ink. It's eight by five, matted and framed, ready to hang in an eleven by fourteen frame for seventy five dollars. Wow. So you, sometimes just framing it alone, just the work of getting it framed, could cost that much. Exactly. So that's an incredibly 
affordable piece. And of course, I also mentioned wearable art, and I'm wearing some of that today. You Can are. you tell our viewers yes. a little bit about what we have? Well, many artists um, in the last few years have been jumping on this sort of proverbial uh, wearable art bandwagon yes. because collectors actually want to wear their favorite artists, their potters and their painters and all that. So uh, many artists are doing that. And Charlene, um, Charlene Holy Bear, who mm -hmm. is Lakota Sioux, mm -hmm. actually uh, is known for these jingle dancer dolls that are uh, handcrafted heads with clay and, and clothing and beautiful intricate beadwork. But she's doing pieces like this, which is a leather Gorgeous. necklace with beadwork. Um, and you just gently tie it together. You can wrap it around. It's $100. So oh, nice. Isn't that, that? And so it's just so pretty, and it lays so nicely. And of course, the earrings. The as well. These are chevron design, micro seed beaded yeah. earrings. Just spectacular. It doesn't really get much better than this when it comes to beadwork. These are two twenty-five. Oh, they're so pretty, and they're and I have to mention they're very very light because that's a concern for a lot of us when we wear the right. bigger earrings. Very very light. And even if people are not in the market to buy art, why would you say they should visit Indian market? Well, I mean, it's really it's really a teachable moment to learn about how you know artists push the envelope mm -hmm. um, and and really take that traditional to the contemporary. Yeah. Pat Pruitt is a oh, Laguna yeah, Pueblo artist. He's really pushed the envelope, single-handedly changed the judging criteria for Indian. Market wow. with his stainless steel and titanium pieces. Gorgeous. Yeah, he actually uh, he will he will use a computer and machinery to uh, to cut them and then hand hand finishes them in the traditional way. This is stingray tan stingray in stainless steel. It's four hundred fifty dollars. A great takeaway for what somebody who really piece. appreciates fine art. What a nice gift that would be as well. Exactly. And, and then Glendora Frawa is a. Uh, is a, a Hamas Pueblo potter, and okay. she learned traditional hand coiling and polishing from her mother, Juanita Frawa. She went away to the West Coast in her formative years and studied fashion, so when she came back, she brought that sense of the delicacy of fashion mm -hmm. to her work, naturalistic themes, insects, flowers, and here we have etched um, a fish and turtle motif Gosh. on a black stone polished pot. Just really gorgeous. Again, I'm always in awe of the detail, and I appreciate the education that you give us mm -hmm. about so many artists, whether they're existing and, and well known or whether they're just emerging. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. And I wanted to go back to the idea of the, um, you know, Indian market itself. Why mm -hmm. should people go even if they're not going to buy? Sure. It's a real teachable moment for adults and children. Where else can you go and pick up and learn about art from all over the country in yeah. one place for free? It's a fun history lesson. It is. And, 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 you know, children, it's a great place to teach them about collecting art. Mm -hmm. If you give them an allowance, give them $10, let them explore, mm -hmm. and they can, I guarantee you, if they come back with one piece this year, they're going to want to come back year after year mm -hmm. Absolutely. and add to their collection. And get a nice appreciation. Of course, all the details for how you can get to Indian Market are on your screen. Make sure you visit the websites. And of course, Paul, we are always so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. And can I just add that I'd love yes. people to go to my blog, which is oh, all yes, these please. items Let's are featured them. on my arts and culture blog, which yes. is located at unclepaulysworld.blogspot.com. UnclePaulie'sWorld.blogspot.com. Don't miss out because Paul always has the inside scoop in the world of art. Thank you so much again. Thank you. It's a pleasure. We'll be right back.